Let me show you a quick and simple way of creating an interactive photo slide in Adobe InDesign. In this video, learn how to convert three images into a multi-state object and set up next and previous button functionality. As an added bonus, I'll go over how to place content into a universal scrolling frame. So let's jump right into this video and start creating. I have three images in this digital newsletter for a fictional meal kit company that I'd like to add to an interactive photo slide. Have a look in my layers panel. There they are, pick one at the very top, followed by pick two and pick three. I'm gonna turn them back on. And so those are the ones that we'll add to the photo slide. You'll also notice that I have a next button here and a previous button. Those will be the buttons that trigger each one of the states or images in the photo slide. Now we'll need two interactive panels in order to create this photo slide. Let's go up to Window, Interactive, and choose Buttons and Forms. I already have mine open. Let's go back to Window, Interactive, and choose Object States. You can see I also have that one open. Next, let's select all three of the images with your selection tool and in the Object States panel, let's go down at the very bottom right and choose Convert Selection to Multi-State Object. You can see that converts all three images into a multi-state object. First, let's go ahead and rename that, and let's just call this Main Images. Next, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and rename the states. So the first one will be Main 1, the second will be Main 2, and let's click on the last one and you guessed it, this will be main three. Now, because this is a multi-state object, you can see I can click through all three and they're on their own individual states. This is important when you're setting up your interactive photo slide. Now that the multi-state object is set up, let's focus on the buttons. I'm gonna click on the right button first and let's choose buttons and forms. Remember, we opened that panel earlier on. In the type dropdown, let's choose button. You can also, if I do Command Z, you can also change your button here from object to button. So click Convert Button, either one works. And I'm going to rename this Next BTN. And under the Actions, let's go ahead and add an action. Let's choose Go to Next State. This will just simply go to the next state in the multi-state object. And this is how we will create this photo slide experience clicking from one image to the next and so on. Now under the object, we only set up one multi-state object and there it is. Remember we called it main images. The other option you have is, do you want this to stop at the last state? I'm gonna leave this unchecked because I want the user experience to be scrolling right through and looping through this interactive photo slide. So I'm gonna leave that unchecked. Now that the next button has been set up, let's focus our attention on the previous button. That's this one here on the left. So go ahead and click that and let's repeat the same process. In the buttons and forms panel under the type dropdown, we want this to be a button and this will be previous BTN. Under the action, instead of go to next state, we want go to previous state. So go ahead and click that again. We only set up one multi-state object. There it is, it's called main images. And I'm gonna leave this unchecked. Now, if I were to preview this now in the EPUB preview window, you could see that icon in the bottom left corner of any of the interactive panels. Go ahead and click that, let's preview it. And you'll notice that we've set up the interactive slide. So I can click next and it just goes through all the images. I can click the previous button and it does the opposite. So we've already set that up, but what if I want kind of a fade in effect on transition? Well, you can do that by adding an animation to each individual state. Let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna close this. And for this, we'll need the animation panel and to open that, again, window, interactive, animation. I already have mine open here in the dock. So what I like to do is group it with the others. Now let's click back on the multi-state object. Click anywhere there and we'll go back to object states with main one selected. Go ahead and double click that. We only wanna add the animation to main one within the multi-state object. So you know you've done that. Have a look, if I click main two and I go back to main one, 
Right now it's a dashed border, but if I double click, it becomes a solid border. That's important because when we add the animation, it'll only apply to the one that you've selected. So go to animation and let's choose a fade in and in the duration, let's set that to 0.5. Let's go back to object states, click main two, then double click to drive into that selection. Go back to animation. The preset here is fade in and the duration is 0.5. Go back to object states, click main three, double click, go back to animation in the preset, choose fade in and the duration here to keep consistent with the others is 0.5 seconds. And you'll see if we test it out now, go ahead and click the EPUB preview window. If I click through, we have a ever so subtle fade in effect when we go to the next or previous slide in our interactive photo slide. Next, let's go over how to add the content on the page to a universal scrolling frame. Something to note before I add this to a universal scrolling frame is this document is sized to my iPhone. You can see in the properties panel, it's 1125 pixels wide by 2436 pixels in height. Now you're probably wondering, this looks a lot deeper than 2436 pixels and you're right. If I click the page tool in the toolbar, you'll notice that the page itself is 3462 pixels. So what I can do here is go back and make this 2436 in the height and press enter. Now that kind of throws things off because it's cutting off the content and that's okay. If I go back to my selection tool and I'm gonna put my guides back on by pressing W on my keyboard, you can see that all the content is still there. I'm gonna select all of it. And what I wanna do is bring the top of it down so it's snapped to the top of the page, just like that. The next step is grouping the content because we're gonna add this in a container. So to do that, just press Command G, that's Control G on Windows. Of course, you can always do it the long form way by going to Object and Group. Once you have it grouped, go ahead and command X to cut all the content. Don't worry, we have it on the pasteboard. We have to create a container. The container will be a rectangle frame. So click that and let's draw out a frame that covers the entire page. Go back to your selection tool, right click on that container and let's choose paste into. I already have the Universal Scrolling Frames extension installed, but I'll leave a link in the description below where you can also download it. Once I have that in the container, I'm gonna click on that frame and I'm gonna to go to Window and down to Universal Scrolling Frames. That'll bring up this window here where I can choose the scroll direction. Now you could set it to auto detect, but I already know that this is a vertical scroll. So I'm gonna choose vertical. The scroll indicators, you have the option to hide, but I'm gonna leave them on. Now that I have that set, I'm just gonna close this and I can go back to any of my interactive panels and open the EPUB preview window. And this is where I can test out that scroll. You can see it scrolls down. I could scroll up and have a look that interactive slide, the image slide still works within that universal scrolling frame, which is really, really cool. Thanks so much for watching and following along in this video. If you'd like to learn more about interactive design and digital publishing using Adobe InDesign, then check out this playlist right up here. Until next time, take care and keep creating.